to Christ Church Borough in Beaconsfield for this, uh, this uh, online service of spiritual communion in, on the fifth Sunday in Lent. A very warm welcome to all of you, whether you're joining us from nearby or far away, and we hope that you'll feel the, the Holy Spirit moving in this, in this online space as we worship together as the body of Christ. Our service begins with our opening hymn, uh, this is a Charles Wesley hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. That's in common phrase 485, or the, and the words will be in front of the screen. Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all, all hearts are open, open all, all desires known, and, and from, from you no know secrets are hidden. Him. Cleanse and the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and, and worthily you magnify your holy name through Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. continues with the readings from Holy Scripture. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. 
The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant that I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 51, verses 1 through 13. That's found on the book of, in the book, book of Alternative Services uh, on page 770. Psalm 51, 1 through 13. We'll say it responsibly by half verse. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. And cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned. And done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak. And upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth. A sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me. And it will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge free me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness. That the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. And blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again. And sustain me with your bountiful spirit. And together we pray. God Lord of compassion, compassion when we, we are weighed down by the burden of our sins, help us to remember that you do not forsake us, but show mercy through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Our second reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 5 to 10. Hebrews 5, 5 through 10. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest. But God said to him, You are my son. Today I have become your father. And he says in another place, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who, for all who obey him, and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. <coughs> Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. This morning's gospel lesson is from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 20 through 33. John 12, 20 through 33. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to, and to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who, lo who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. 
My father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it, it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out, and when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. In the name of the Holy Trinity, the source of all the Incarnate Word, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> I'll be the first to admit that gardening is not an activity that brings me immense pleasure. And I have no in inclination to engage in anything resembling any sort of agriculture. Not for lack of exposure to it, mind you, and my father knows all there is to know about plants, and my granddad was a very enthusiastic vegetable gardener, bordering on farmer, actually. And it's perhaps due to summers I spent in the sweltering, buggy Georgia heat working in my grandparents' garden that I don't feel particularly motivated to undertake such a task voluntarily. I have very many fond memories of summers with my grandparents, but the, the sticky heat and the, the buggy itchiness are not, uh, are not the ones I remember with the greatest fondness. And in fact, I'm delighted that nowadays I live in a, an apartment where there's no, not even a single blade of grass to be cut. Be that as it may, I still understand the basics of, of gardening and plants and growing things, how it all works. And in the Bible, there, is, there are no shortage of agricultural references. Many of Jesus' metaphors are drawn from agriculture. And this is no surprise because uh, first century Roman Palestine was uh, primarily an agricultural society, especially in Galilee, where Jesus was from. Agriculture and fishing, that was pretty much the two, the two uh, businesses in town. So to the folks listening to Jesus in his day, agricultural images were very relatable. Today's gospel passage contains one such agricultural reference. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed, but if it dies, it produces many seeds. This is one of those passages that we have become so familiar with that we don't really analyze the words and uh, the literal meaning. But scientifically, biologically, horticulturally speaking, seeds don't die when they're put in the ground. Um, true, a dry seed uh, looks dead. It's, it's not green. It doesn't have the normal signs of life and vitality. But it is, in fact, alive, but just dormant, and it's awaiting the proper conditions, soil, moisture, heat, and light, just to activate it and bring it out of dormancy. But even if a seed does not actually die when it's planted in the earth, it does nonetheless change very drastically. It, it changes in such a dramatic way that uh, that you could say that the seed dies to its old self and gives way to a new plant. The seed no longer exists in the way that it used to and exists in a completely different, unrecognizable way. The seed has ceased to exist and now exists as a plant. This verse in John's Gospel is not the only reference to the dying seed imagery in the New Testament. 
In fact, in his first letter to the Corinthians, uh, the exact refer reference is 1 Corinthians 15, 36 through 42, St. Paul uses this imagery to describe the nature of resurrection. And I quote, Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed it, its own body. Not all flesh is alike, but there is one flesh for human beings, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are both heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is one thing, and that of the earthly is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. Indeed, stars differ from star in glory. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. So if we leave aside the point that seeds don't literally die to produce the new plant, his point is quite clear. The seed goes into the ground as a small, dead-looking thing, doesn't really look alive. But the plant which, is, which emerges from the ground looks completely and totally different. Verdant, lush, and full of life. Yet that plant emerged from that very dead-looking little seed. And this, St. Paul tells us, is how resurrection works. The resurrection body, and the, word, the Greek word used for body, which is soma, uh, it's more holistic than the English word body. It refers not to just the physical flesh, but, but one's whole being, all that makes you who you are. That's what the, the Greek word is translated as body means. But the resurrection body is drastically different from our physical physical body on this uh, earth plane. It is as, as, dif as different as the, the full-grown big plant is different from the little dry seed. So too is the resurrection life different, dif different from earthly life. But perhaps the metaphor of the seed works even better considering how seeds actually work in nature, without the whole dying, uh, uh, the seed dying aspect. The seed is but a, sh a pale shadow of what is to become. Yet all the potential of what is to become is there, within the seed. And when the seed is planted in the earth, and you add water and sun, in the soil around it, the seed is transformed into the glorious, full-grown plant it was meant to be. Yet to the outside observer, the plant bears no resemble whatsoever to the seed. The seed appears to have died to give way to a completely new uh, form of being, a new plant. As Paul explains to us, the resurrection life is, of course, vastly different from worldly life, to the point that one doesn't resemble the other at all. But the potential for that resurrection life lies within us already. The divine spark, the light, light, and love of God is within us. Within us, like the potential of the great plant, lies in that small, dry seed, within the husks of that dry seed, that dead-looking thing, with uh, water, I'm talking about spiritually speaking, with water, nourishment, and light, that resurrection life will grow from within us, ultimately stretching to life everlasting as the, as the dry seed husks of this life are, are shed the worldly baggage of this life, this earthly existence, is shed and a new life springs forth. 
Right? This, is, this is the great central truth of the Christian faith. And as we arrive at Easter, little by little, I mean, this, is the, this is the truth we celebrate at Easter, the, the resurrection. That death does not have the last word. That life is ultimately victorious over death. And this most obviously and routinely applies to the physical death of individuals, bodily death. Yet the truth of resurrection extends to all areas of life. We only need to look out our windows right now uh, to see the melting snow, the lengthening of the days, and the, burger, the birds be beginning to sing. And yesterday was the first official day of spring, the spring equinox. And the truth of the resurrection is written in the book of nature all around us. I feel that the image of the seed falling into the ground is especially appropriate in the times we, we're living in right now. For a year now, we've been living in isolation. Many of our, our beloved activities suspended for how long we don't know. In many ways, living in existence which seems like a mere shadow of the life we lived before. It's almost as if we, we've been living in a tomb of sorts for the last year, buried in the ground. The life we knew prior to the pandemic has, in many respects, ceased. And we hope to return to the way things were before, but we don't know for absolute certain that we will. And even in the best case scenario, we, we know that things will be at least somewhat different. Right now, as people are getting vaccinated, as spring comes, uh, rolls in, it's a nice coincidence, a very a meaningful coincidence I find, and as Easter approaches, we're beginning to see the light at the surface. Light, you know, light uh, come, beginning to come through the topsoil. But we can't see clearly what is up there yet. So we don't know exactly what awaits us. And this is true for us as individuals, as nations, as societies, and particularly true for the church and for the church in our diocese and our country. This past year has modified church life in so many unexpected ways. <clears throat> and yes, very soon we'll be able to return to some, some form of in-person worship. More on that later. And hopefully by the end of this year, things will start to look more or less like they used to. But things will never be exactly the same. God doesn't resurrect us to be the same. God resurrects us to a new, a new life as new creations. Now, I, I, I have a crystal ball. I don't know what the church will look like after all. All this is over, as we keep saying. But it is still God's church. God is still working through that church through us as individuals, as a body, the body of Christ, and working through us and bringing about new life, something that we may not completely recognize, but God is working that, working in us to bring about that new life. New life for the church, new life for the kingdom of God. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism in the words of the Apostles' Creed, as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For the prayers of the people today, we'll be using Litany 2, uh, found on page 112 of the BAS. But first, we have a, have a time of intercessory prayer and prayer requests. So if you, um, if you have prayers for healing, prayers for support, prayers for solace, prayers for whatever, uh, feel free to type them in the comment section and we'll pray together. God of healing, we pray for the pandemic that continues to ravage the world, even as we, we see signs of hope and we have hope for new life. We pray for those who are, who are sick. We pray for those who are caring for them in the medical field and in the personal care field. We pray for, especially for those who are distributing, distributing vaccines and we pray for cooperation among nations and peoples to quickly and efficiently vaccinate as many people as possible to, so that we may bring an end to this, to this crisis. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need in our parish. We pray especially for Eleanor. Christopher, Shirley, Art, Mary, Robbie, and Colleen. We pray for those who are grieving, for Karen, Sandy and Ian and Ron, Nancy, Larry, Jeff and Andy, Clifford, Cedric, Anne and Michael, Linda and Steve. We are praying for Terry, so that he can walk independently again, and so that he regains the use of his left arm. We are praying for Sandy's friend Mary, with fractured hip. We pray for all those who are recovering and, uh, from, from injury and operations, that you are able to restore movement and mobility, we pray also for those who are suffering from mental health issues, which have been worsened, only worsened by this, this crisis we're living in. We pray for, for love and support for those who are suffering in all ways, in body, mind, and spirit. We are sending the prayers of healing for Jenny and for Roland. We pray for our diocese, for our leadership, for for Bishop Mary, for Archdeacon, Executive Archdeacon Kamara, for Archdeacon Michelle, for all the clergy of our diocese and especially for the, the churches in the West Island and for our own parish, that you may guide us and uphold us as we emerge from this time of, uh, of, uh, of seclusion and isolation start to undertake activities again. We pray for our partners, especially for, for the Anglican Church of Canada, for the, uh, and for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, as well as our, uh, our neighboring parishes, uh, United Church parishes and Presbyterian and Catholic parishes in Beaconsfield. Gracious God, you have heard the prayers that we have lifted up to you today and with which we have whispered silently in our hearts. All this we ask in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. 
O Lord, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Give to all nations an awareness of the unity of the human family. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selfishness and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Teach us to use your creation for your greater praise, that all may share the good things you provide. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Strengthen all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. <laughs> Grant a peaceful end and eternal rest to all who are dying, and your comfort to those who mourn. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Our service continues with confession. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have, we have not, not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We, we are truly sorry and we humbly repent. repent. For, For the, the sake of your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Now share a sign of the peace of Christ with those in your household or through the comment section below the video. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace. Let us pray. Eternal God, your Son, your only Son, suffered death upon the cross to bring the world salvation. Accept the praise and thanksgiving we offer this day. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And let us pray. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered throughout the world and throughout time, at every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are offered, 
we long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. We believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since we cannot at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all our heart, soul, and mind. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until, by your grace, we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our, our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now is our time of spiritual communion meditation. Uh, as uh, Yevgenia sings for us, um, take this time to turn inward to to, to go inside and, and, uh, and commune with Christ in your heart. Together we pray, come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in our hearts in the fullness of your strength. Be our wisdom and guide us in right pathways. Conform our lives and actions to the image of your holiness, 
and the power of your gracious might rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom. Who the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns in, with, in glory everlasting. Amen. And together we pray, glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. May the God of mercy transform you by his grace, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Announcement time. Uh, coffee fellowship today at 11 o'clock. Uh, right after this service, I think we should be able to be in right on time. Please note that there's a new link, uh, so use the one that Irene sent out in the, in the, in the newsletter this week. Uh, the, uh, the old one has expired, so use the one, the most recent one that you have. Some good news, finally, good news. Um, as you probably heard, the, the province has increased, well, is going to be increasing the number of, of people allowed in worship up to 25 and in turn our diocese has uh, allowed us uh, in uh, to to also increase our to to come back to in-person worship which we haven't been doing since uh, beginning of January so I I'm pleased to announce that for Easter Sunday we will be open again with the limits and restrictions and protocols in place, so it's 25 only, and you know, you have to wear a mask, no congregational singing, hand sanitizing, communion in one kind of same grill that we did back in, in December. Uh, for Easter Sunday, because there's the potential for, you know, there to be too many people, uh, we ask that you uh, register with the church office in advance. I don't want this, however, this is, just to so that we you know that we can manage the, the the number of people for Easter Sunday and not you know not have people show up and be you know be turned away. Uh, this is not to discourage people from signing up though. Um, if you are if you are comfortable coming to church and you want to come to church, please do not hesitate. Um, when we did this at Christmas. Um, I, it's talking to people after the fact. People told me, oh, I wanted to go, but I didn't because I didn't want to take a place from someone else. Well, guess what happened? On Christmas Eve, we had fewer people than we were allowed to have. We had empty spaces, so um, I don't want that to happen again. You know, if we're allowed to have 25, uh, by golly, let's have 25. So if you want, if you're comfortable coming to church on Easter and you want to come, just go ahead and sign up. I know it's a very kind and Christian gesture to be thinking about people who might want to come, but that too many people did that last time and we had empty places. So uh, please sign up in advance. And that will be com Holy Communion, first Holy Communion we've had since Epiphany. Uh, it's a very appropriate time to come back to church, I find, on the, on the Sunday of the Feast of the Resurrection. Um, that said, the online broadcast will continue. Uh, just so, if, if you prefer, you're more comfortable watching, joining from home, or if you're joining us from far away, this broadcast will be available in the same place, just like now. So you won't really feel any difference other than we'll be having communion instead of spiritual communion. Um, also regarding the broadcast, uh, if you're watching on Facebook, of course, you obviously have no problem getting the service. If you're listening to me right now live, uh, you, it works for you. Uh, and it generally works for anyone who has a Facebook account. And it also is, usually if you don't have a Facebook account, you can, uh, you can, you can view the service. But some people have had problems. So we have a new option as of today. Actually, we started last Thursday, but... Um, that you can view the service live on the Christchurch Borough Fair website. 
So go to the website, and in the upper, um, upper left-hand corner, so like up there, um, you'll see join us live, and you can view the video in real time. Now, if you have a Facebook account, it's still preferred that you watch it on Facebook because you can comment, and it also gives us statistics of who's watching and, and all that. But if you don't have Facebook, this is an option that might work better for you. And of course, after the, fa after the fact, we, we continue to put the videos up on YouTube. So there are actually three different viewing options uh, for the services, Sunday and Thursday, uh, live on Facebook, live on our website, or uh, pre-recorded on a uh, YouTube channel. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Um, what else? Uh, all our Lenten programs continue. Um, the the EcoFast, the Fast for the Earth. Uh, we have check-ins at Friday on, at 2 p.m. Uh, on Zoom, and that continues for two uh, weeks yet. Uh, what else? Uh, Thursday evening prayer, uh, it, it, it's at 7 o'clock every Thursday on Facebook Live and in all the other the places where you can view the Sunday service. This, this Thursday will be special because it's the Feast of the Annunciation, so it's not a Lenten service, but a, 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 a festive service. Music. Um, thanks, as always, to Sylvia and to Eugenia for the music. Um, and today we had quite a variety, as you'll see with our, our, our final hymn, we've gone, you know, the whole gamut of you know church music, I think, um, and there's a way for you to participate. You will recall that uh, last week we had uh, a congregational hymn that was pre-recorded, "Be Thou My Vision," and we had like, I think 14 people that uh, that participated, recording their voice individually at home, and then Sylvia uh, compiled them and mixed it into a. Uh, into a, a compilation that sounds like people are together singing in the church. I think it turned out really well. We're going to do that again for Easter, because even though if we can come to church on Easter Sunday, at this point we're not allowed to sing together. Uh, I think we're going to allow our soloist to sing, but that's under special dispensation, I, you know, very distant from everyone and wearing a singing mask. So we can't sing together. But we can do this again with a pre-recorded uh, uh, voices. And I think so, so soon, early this week, you'll be getting an email about that. So I really encourage you to, to, uh, to participate and don't think you have to be the greatest singer in the world to participate. It's more about hearing our voices join together and think about how that will, that will sound on Easter Sunday. Be the only vision on YouTube. Yes, and the the, the 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 hymn we heard last week, Be Thou My Vision, and also the, the Kyrie that you heard again this morning, uh, those are available on our YouTube channel. And I think that's all the announcements, very long announcements. Um, so I hope to see uh, many of you at coffee hour in a few minutes. And our, and our closing hymn, which is not in our hymnal, but I know it from childhood, uh, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. This is actually was uh, a request by one of, our, one of our parishioners. So the words will be up uh, in front of the screen.
peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.